As an IS auditor, when this system or software that has been developed is ready to actually be deployed, there are three things in particular you're going to be looking at. Configuration management, change management, and release management. Now configuration management is as the name implies. Has this system, software, whatever, been configured the way it should have been so that it maintains consistent performance, consistent functionality, consistent physical um, whatever features as was originally specified as it's supposed to be like. So has this been configured and is it staying configured to do its job properly with the level of performance and a consistency that we expect you know, from its requirements. Then with change management, if anybody wants to change anything, there needs to be a process, either it can be highly formalized or, but, or it can be relatively simple, but you don't just allow people to just change things just on the fly. Even if, if a developer wants to change one line of code, there needs to be a reason why after it has been um, deployed. So we want to manage change. And also release management. You'll find that it becomes easier to, unless it's an emergency and you need to send out a hotfix immediately, to send out releases on regular intervals. So the configuration management process. Here is a nice checklist we should be looking at. We want to have the configuration management plan. So when we actually deploy this thing, how are we going to configure it? And we want to have a plan for configuring it so we can always stay with that plan so that it, um, what, however we configure this, this system, this application, that uh, if, if it drifts off of it, we can always go back to uh, what our expectation is. We want to baseline the code and any related documents. Baseline means you set the beginning expectation uh, with any bottlenecks or any problems taken care of. What is the, the beginning starting um, optimum performance of this thing? And then from there we can, we can develop it and we can further tweak it. But what's the, what's the starting good point? We want to analyze and present findings on any configuration control results. So when we configured this, what was the result? And we want to see if there were any findings recorded on that. And of course, we want to see that there were reports that provided the status of the configuration. And we want to see if there are release procedures. Because one of the problems you run into when you have um, different uh, releases in different versions with minor and major updates is you'll now have inconsistency in releases. And that will come back to haunt you. I mean, like, we spent over a year trying to make the data that was in one version, an earlier release, now work with the data and the reports in a later release because the schemas of the databases didn't even line up. So you've got to be careful about having different release versions. And you have to be really careful about if some of these are just being tested and they're in beta, you don't want them getting out into production. And um, there have been many, many times, and we've had minor differences in versions not work. So like a dev is working on a particular problem, he shuts off a whole bunch of functionality just so he can focus on one thing, and he'll get to, to the other functionality later. And now we're using the, a version that has the wrong functionality. So it, we, we have to have some uh, control over the release process. And we'll want to perform any configuration control activities and update the configuration status database. What it, wherever it is that we're maintaining configuration stati status, we're going to want to update that. With releases, like I said, you want to control the, lease, the release process. And what most software vendors will do is that they'll have regular schedules where they'll send out um, maybe every 18 months comes a service pack or a major release comes every uh, two years or um, minor releases come every quarter or something like that. So there, there's a clear, inner, a clear time or all non-critical service packs go out on Tuesday or, or something like that. So you'll want to have some way of um, uh, releasing uh, new updates. And when we talk about the concept of a release, these are changes to the software that have been authorized and they're, they're bundled together. So now this is a new version or a major or a minor version. So when we're talking about types of releases, we generally use numbering systems to imply 
is it a major version, is it a minor version? And different vendors will have different numbering systems. So like um, sometimes people will use odd numbers to show that it is one type of release and even numbers to show that it's like another type. So like maybe the odd numbers are beta releases and the even numbers are stable releases. And so here's like an example. Major release is 1.0.0. .0 .0. A minor release is 1.1.0, and an emergency, 1.1.1. You want to make sure that you have some consistency here so that when we take a look at it, we can tell, was this major, was this minor, was this a hot fix or an emergency? So when you are, as an auditor, looking at the release management process, here is a list of things we want to be looking at. We want to have agreement on the proposed release and the contents of the release. And there will be all kinds of fights, I'll tell you. You know, um, people will, competing interests will say, but we've got to have that, that functionality next month. No, no, we really need to fix this functionality. And somebody has to make a decision. Look, guys, in this next release, we're going to have these things, but not those things. And so uh, we have to have some agreement on what is going to be the content of the release. Uh, get agreement on the order of the release, like uh, when, when do we release new features broken down by geographical area, customer business unit, need, um, whatever. Like, so in some cases, uh, we had provinces where we needed to release something different from another. But the, the difficulty was that uh, what we ended up with was these inconsistent releases, and now we had databases that didn't work with each other and data that didn't work with each other. And so we were trying to then bring everybody back to a baseline. So you have to be careful about geographically based releases. Make sure you have a release schedule. Try to figure out what you're going to need to send out the release. Like in our case, they couldn't just go on the internet and download it. The internet was too expensive. Nobody had it. So we ad actually had to send teams out and have the teams carry the releases physically with them and send them across the country. Um, get agreement on who's responsible. You know, a project's going to flounder if you don't have accountability and responsibility. So we, we have to say who's responsible, who's accountable for this or that role during the release process. Uh, one thing that we did was, as the teams went out, we established like a, a sort of a command center, and the teams could call in on their cell phones because they, they couldn't really get Internet access, and they could call in and report where they were and if they had some, any issues. Um, have a backup plan, totally. You never know what you're going to run into there. Maybe the, the install of the update, the, the power gets cut in the middle, and now the update has corrupted the operating system because it's incomplete. So you need a backout plan to get your um, uh, whoever your users are immediately back to where they were. Or, in, in our case, if the computer wouldn't work, they have to fall back on their paper system for a while. And then we'll, we'll back enter the paper when we bring back the repaired computer. And then develop a plan for the actual release itself and also plan for support. So I and other people were standing by on phone uh, as the teams went out there and they ran into this problem or that problem. We could talk them through how to deal with it by phone. So these are the things we have to be looking at in the release management process. Now, one thing that you may run into occasionally, and this is very disruptive, is a business might decide they need to completely rethink how they do things. They need to re-engineer their business process. This is like they, they want to um, do something extremely radical. We're going to completely do things differently. In our case, we went from um, a more traditional um, sort of development, actually sort of a prototype, um, but partly SDLC to an agile development. And um, uh, so we were re-engineering our whole development process. And so organizations might be fundamentally rethinking how they even do their work. They might want to dramatically improve their product, improve customer service. They might want to cut operational costs, or they might want to become a competitor, a player in, in the, the market or in the um, in the, the business environment. When they do that, this is a really big thing. So we have to define, well, what is it that you need to re-engineer and have a plan for that, a whole project for that, realizing that there's going to be whole culture changes here and you really need support from the top. We need to understand 
the process as it is now and figure out, well, why isn't it good? Or why is it outdated? And then redesign it to make it more effective, more efficient, more competitive, whatever the, the desire is. And as you implement this, you need to monitor the new process. Is this new process doing any better? You know, I mean, we were promised all kinds of things, and now it's ultimately we're not any better off. We're totally different, but we're not any better off. And, and why is that? Did we not train people? Did we pick the wrong product? Did we release at the wrong time? You know, why is that? And very often it's you have to change culture. And um, so this is also very different or very difficult. You know, usually if you have to change culture in a department or in an organization, it helps to physically change things too. Maybe um, shake up other things. Uh, if people have like, it could be as simple as the furniture has been rearranged or we have like a ceremony or the lighting has changed or we've got new plants and people are going to take on different duties. We're gonna trade duties and cross train. If you shake up someone's world a little bit, it becomes a whole lot easier for them in a new sort of environment to adapt to something new than if you throw something new on them and they're still, everything else is the same. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a psychological technique that sometimes works. So this whole business process re-engineering, did we go through all of these steps? And as the IS auditor, because this is so major and momentous, you have to see if they did that. So as an IS auditor, when we are looking at the business process re-engineering and evaluating their readiness, we want to look at these things. Were the stakeholders identified? Were they involved in the decision-making process? Were they consulted for their area of expertise? I've had directors that just decided that they knew best and they would not listen to their senior people. And um, they made decisions and they didn't even want to hear it. And uh, we all suffered later. So um, as managers, did the managers consult the people who actually know what's going to happen? Um, were the stakeholders and the users involved in the testing, did they sign off and say, yeah, we're happy, this is working fine? If, if there were any last minute concerns, did we ask them, is this totally working the way you want? Just use it the way you normally do. Are there any last minute things? Um, also, uh, if there's any change or configuration or release management processes that were uncovered that might be candidates for business process re-engineering. Like, um, as we're doing this, did we discover, oh, we really should redo how we consider that as well. Did any of those get uncovered and might be now a target for uh, the next project or part of this project? Were all the inputs and the outputs adequately tested? And of course, do we have the appropriate documentation?